I'm, uh, I'm going to basically give you guys the, the same kind of rundown that I gave uh, Friday Squad, um, which is the first thing that we're going to do is just a, a basic lesson um, so that you guys have a decent feel for how that goes. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll take you guys to the obstacle course. Um, and uh, something to note about the obstacle course as well as the dual nature of uh, these games is that one, the obstacle course changes every day. Two, the obstacle course is smart. So if there is a path that is uh, completely outside of the party's uh, abilities or uh, knowledge, um, that is not going to end up in the, um, uh, it's not going to end up in the, um, game. Why do you guys not have the music? Um... Anyway, so the, the obstacle course will sometimes close off sections um, for the different parties. So, um, like, none of you have specializations yet, so none of you have uh, really any knowledge of runes, which means that the path that last night, or that Friday's party ended up taking, is not available to you guys. Um, but not because they've already done it, but because you don't have the knowledge to be able to go down that path safely. I can say that, that stream on Friday was fantastic. Thank you. Like, the, I was like, what birds? There's no birds here. And, and Lonnie would have been like, those birds are speaking gibberish. Uh-uh. No, those aren't real birds. Uh-huh. <laughs> yep. You were convinced these trees are fake. <laughs> you are convinced these trees are fake. They probably don't even exist at all. This is like the. <laughs> that was so good. Oh, uh, yeah. I was. I was really happy with that. <laughs> um, but yeah. So to start off, um, you guys are. Uh, You know, we're going to do art. Um, we're going to do an art class. So, uh, art classes are um, fairly free. Uh, there will be, you know, at the beginning of the class, uh, essentially, the instructor um, shows you a new method of doing something and then has... Uh, all of you attempt that, but then the rest of the class you can work on whatever project you already have going. Um, so, if the uh, if the method that is shown is relevant to you, then you know you can continue doing it. Um, but if not, then you can always choose to go back to you know your. Uh, glass blowing, or your smoke painting, or whatever you want. So with this one, um, it's going to be um, just a quick lesson in watercoloring. Um, so that is going to be a flight roll, um, and the. You know, art is is pretty loose, so this isn't going to be a super difficult role. Um, it is going to be uh, difficulty. Uh, oh yeah, and so um, whenever you guys do art, there's two ways to do it. Um, you can just be doing art for art's sake. Uh, and, you know, it, it essentially mundane art. So um, if you're doing art for, you know, in a mundane way, nothing magical about it, not trying to imbue it with anything, uh, you're going to use the mundane die, which is a D6. 
Um, but if you are trying to infuse it with magic, you're going to use your D4. Um, so to start this off, it'll be watercolor. Uh, let me know if you are wanting to uh, make a magical watercolor or a mundane watercolor. Um, but your difficulty for this is going to be a 10. And that is flight. Yep. So I'm just going to try some magic. Okay. I'm going to do a mundane. <laughs> All right. So that's the flight die plus the mundane die. Yep. And then um, because you are all uh, underclassmen, you'll have a plus one every time you roll flight. I got ten exactly. All right. Perfect. Oh, um, Bailey, I just noticed on Ellis's sheet, uh, you have a plus one stat in fight, not flight. So I need to put it in flight? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay, yeah. cool. I thought, I yeah, they, they sound very similar in my brain. They do sound very similar, yeah. Um, right. I have moved it. Perfect, perfect. All right. All right, so if I do magic, it's a flight die plus a d6? So uh, anytime you... Around? Other way around. So if you do uh, mundane, it's a d6. If you do magic, it's a d4. Um, you have a plus one for magic in flight. So, um, you know, if you... Uh, were to roll the same number on either die, the magic die would end up being higher. Um, but uh, it is entirely your choice. Um, with a uh, with magic is a d4, w mundane is a d6. All right, I'm gonna just do mundane then. Okay, you got eight. Okay. Um, and remember, everyone, you do start off the game with three adversity tokens. Um, I have Skittles. <laughs> perfect. I got seven. Okay. And JJ, what did Felix get? Oh no, tech issues. Oh gosh. Not JJ. Why is it always you? I have no idea. Hello, I've just had to switch <laughs> what Wi Fi I'm connected to in my building. Um, <laughs> oh my god. I missed like all of that explanation. I am so sorry. That is perfectly fine. Um, Alright, so you're doing a watercolor. You have two options with it. You can do it just mundane. It's going to stay still on the paper like a normal watercolor that you can do in real life today. Um, and if you do it that way, it's going to be your flight die plus your D6 for mundane. Um, and then... Uh, you can also try and do it with magic, um, and that would be your flight die plus your d4 magic die, and you are going to use, um, uh, let's see, where did your character sheet-ish thing go? Okay, um, so... You... Um, 
Okay, so you don't have your focus yet, so you'll have a plus one um, for the roll no matter what, but you won't have um, any additional, so um, it's just up to you whether you want it to be a magical painting with a d4 um, or a uh, mundane painting with a d6, and the difficulty level is 10. So you have to meet or beat a 10. Go mundane. Why not, to start? <laughs> I guess. Good deal. Um, so, remind me one more time. What am I rolling? So, um... Hey! Bun, 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 bun! You are rolling your flight die, which for you is a d10. Okay. Um, plus a d6. Okay. Uh. Twelve? Awesome. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, so... Everybody get it except me? No. Um, it no. was half and half. Um, so, alright. Uh, so, you guys um, both go to uh, you know, do yours. You, you get the outline, like, in pencil and it's looking really good. You're feeling good about yourself. Um, and then uh Lonnie when when you go to put the uh paintbrush to the paper you sneeze and actually end up like cutting the paper with the paintbrush um and uh soul caster just gets all over your paper and is like is it food time i think it's food time where's the food why am i wet yeah i'm the one that failed it oh you failed it sorry ah uh, okay I cannot hear it. For some reason, the two of you sound exactly the same to me. Good. Okay, it's I'll not just it. me. Okay. Um. Yeah. I. Every time you're both in a voice chat, I'm just like, which one is it? Which one is it? Uh. Do you even have similar inflections? You know, and, now that you mention it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and like you I think even we might need the light up thing on Twitch. Yeah, <laughs> um, I just that that's thirty minutes of setup per character. So yeah, no, I get it. Yeah, um, never know. But uh, but yeah, we'll 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 work on that. Okay, so in that case, um, yeah, no. So when Ellis goes to to write. Uh, Ratty Coda just starts glowing. <laughs> this, you know, like, teal luminescence just, like, emanating. And you can't focus. You don't even, like, try and paint. You're just like, <gasps> Pretty rat. Yes, you're such a good boy. Such a good boy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then, uh... Sol and Felix, you're you're both like super happy with it. Um, you know, you're not like prodigies or anything, but like those are solid fucking watercolors. And uh Felix at least is thinking about maybe sending it back home for them to put on the fridge. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> um so, you know, Great job with that. Solid watercolors. Um, you have a little bit of time left in classroom. Uh, is there anything in particular that you guys want to uh, try and do before classwork uh, lets out? I'm gonna try again. You want to try again? Okay. Um, so that is going to be a difficulty of nine because every time you attempt, the difficulty goes down one. And um, Ellis, would would Ellis want to actually attempt now? Um, 
Yeah, sure. <laughs> okay. So, difficulty of nine. Good luck. <laughs> I got a 14. It's worse than last time? Oh, God. Oh, no! Oh, my. A six. Okay. Um, beautiful. Well, the good news is, it's not an epic fail. It's just, you know, about the same thing, and then Lonnie is just frustrated and decides to go back to the fucking smoke painting, because that's what he can do. <laughs> um, but Ellis, when he actually puts his mind to it and is paying attention, um, is able to, like, just really get some insane detail in there, super proud of it, other people look over and they're like, oh my god, you're really good at this. And everyone just kind of assumes that initially Ellis was not really paying attention and stuff because he already knew that he had watercoloring down because 14, that's an epic success. Yay! Yay! Um, do, uh, do Felix and Soul work on any uh, personal projects or are they just kind of admiring their handiwork? Amazing. I love it. Okay. Um cool. So uh interesting. Okay. So Caster art is going to be, um, so is he just, like, coloring on the page, or is he trying to actually make a, like, picture? He's just going to dip himself in the watercolor and slither on this page, and whatever happens, happens. Okay, cool. <laughs> so difficulty is going to be a five. Okay. Because we're not we're not asking him to to do a whole bunch of craziness, um, and uh, whenever you guys have your familiars do something, um, you are essentially giving them a boost of ability. So when you roll for your uh, familiars, unless it's a like how much did they get hurt by that thing kind of roll. You're going to use your magic die. Um, so you will roll... Um, it's going to be uh, flight again. Um, but you'll roll with your magic die. Okay. Three, a four, and my one stack. All right, so you get to re-roll that four, because that is an explosion. A three. All right, sweet. So that is uh, eight, nine, twelve. And you needed a ten, so that is seven higher than you needed, which means that uh, caster... That derpy son of a bitch managed to actually, like, make something that looks like an image. It's one of those, uh, blot images. Yeah. Ink blot. <laughs> it's, a, it's a snake drawn Rorschach test. <laughs> um. <laughs> but, uh, you, you can both feel through your bond and see... Just in the way that he's, like, holding himself, that Caster is insanely proud of himself right now. And once your mind acknowledges that, he says, food? <laughs> food it's now? Food it's not food time yet. But I did a good job. Yeah, you gotta wait till after class and then food, okay, buddy? Other familiars get treats. Their treats aren't... Live animals. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> okay. Wait a 
least until class is over, okay, bud? Mm, okay. Dang. And then he just slithers back to, uh, to dangle in front of your face. <laughs> um, and then Felix, what did you say that uh, that he would be doing? Um, just just admiring the handiwork, to be honest. All right, fantastic. Um, so there's been mostly success all around. Uh, Lonnie is is feeling a little down, um, but class lets out, and uh, you're uh, you're all. Done with school for the day. This was your last class, and so you are um, just kind of, uh, you know, you've got uh, an, about an hour, hour and a half uh, before dinner, and um, so you've got a few options. You can go study, you can uh, go, uh, you know, check out, um, something in the library, there's a bit of forest that you guys know is available, um, Felix and, uh, Thelon would already have some idea of, uh, what kind of materials they need for their, um, for their foci, um, so, and some of those would be in the forest, so that is always an option, but there's also an obstacle course, um, and as you guys are, uh, kind of coming out of class, you hear some other students talking about some of the upperclassmen going in, um, and into the obstacle course, and, uh, that there was a bit of excitement there, um, so what would you guys like to do? Ellis is going to go sit outside of the obstacle course and just start reading his book. Just so he All can right. hear like the gossip that's going on if anybody goes in, but <laughs> he's not going to try it out. Okay. Slayer is running is head first into like that cover? obstacle course. <laughs> it's like a hedge maze. Caster is secure on the body and then just head first, run right to that obstacle course. Perfect. <laughs> Would not expect anything else. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And uh, Felix, did you uh say where you're headed? We're gonna check out the obstacle course. Why not? <laughs> Perfect. All right. So just like Friday night, we have one person reading outside the obstacle course and three people going in. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and obviously, uh, Caster is going to the um, is going. Uh, I assume Ratty is staying with Ellis. Are Sammy and Pepper Flake joining uh, you guys in the obstacle course? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> awesome. All right. Um, so you guys get there. You uh, enter the maze, and as soon as all three of you are in there, the hedge just kind of closes up behind you. Um, and uh, directly ahead of you is just, you know, standard-looking hedge maze. Um, but over to the right, instead of standard hedges, there's uh, rose bushes lining the whole way down. Um, and then you're pretty sure that there's normally a third route over to the right, but uh, it's completely blocked off uh, with hedge. So which way would you guys like to go? I'm going to go the rose bush way. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, perfect. Um, so you guys go down. Uh, it's it's lovely. It's filled with roses of all sorts of colors. There's tons of beautiful smells, um, and uh, and as you're going down, um, you. Uh, 
you're just, you know, it, it, you, you guys have been through the obstacle course before. Um, a couple of classes, you know, uh, in your first year, have you uh, go in it? Oh, God, okay. Um, but uh, this is probably the first time that you've gone in without it being specific to a class. So you're not entirely sure what to expect, um, but you are all kind of, uh, you know, hyper aware that something could be coming. So if I can get each of you to roll, uh, brains with magic, the difficulty for this is going to be an eight. <laughs> oh, no. Ooh. Aww. Um. These aren't even my new dice. Like, they're my tried and true dice. They got me through Hogwarts. <laughs> Aww. Um. Still new dice. Okay, was that uh, Soul that got a, a 19? Yes. Alright, and was that uh, just your uh, Brains die, or was that Brains plus Magic? Uh, brains plus Magic. Okay. I got an 18 and a 1. <laughs> that figures. Um, oh, 18. and... Felix. Awesome. Um, and just to uh, it, remind you guys, when I give you rolls, um, if the difficulty score is your... Um, is equal to or less than half of your die critical plus your buffs, then you can take half and automatically succeed. Um, so keep that in mind, and I will try and periodically remind you guys. Um, but Felix, you said you got a 15? 18. 18, okay. Yes. And then, can you say that uh, one more time? Yep, so if your um, if the difficulty score is equal to or less than half of your uh, critical success, um, so with a d20, half would be 10, um, plus any applicable uh, buffs, um, you can just take half and automatically succeed. So if, uh, if it's a roll that you know, might be dangerous to fail, and that's an option, um, unless I say that it's a, uh, a snap decision, you can take half and automatically succeed. Oh, cool. Um, so, what was Ellis's role? Oh, I, I didn't... Realize Ellis was wrong. Oh no, sorry, that's right. You're yeah. you're out there reading. Okay. That's right. Okay. Like a nerd. <laughs> nerd. <laughs> yes. Alright. And yeah. uh your roll was a five? Jesus. Okay. So new school new dice, I'm using my new dice. Yep. And you've you've <laughs> taken your uh adversity tokens, right? Um Yes. Except for this roll, which I can stick now. Okay. Doesn't Cryptic have an automatic explosion, too? Yeah, Cryptic does have an automatic explosion to remember. Okay, um, okay. so... Uh, <laughs> perfect. Alright, so... Um, with two epic uh, successes, and not just regular epic successes, but tier two epic successes... Uh, Lonnie's failure does not really matter, um, because you guys are able to, uh, notice that the rose bushes are not, uh, quite normal for rose bushes. They seem to be, um, kind of moving. Almost like instead of normal bush with limbs and branches, they're like kind of viney but just happen to have um, roses on them. So um, 
the two of you noticed that, um, and, uh, Felix, um, spends a lot of time outside, a lot of time around nature, really, you know, it is into animal care and stuff, um, so Felix especially is just kind of like, oh, this is not, these aren't real rose bushes, um, and you recognize that they're a, uh, they're a member of the Sleeping Rose family. So, um, you know that if you touch them, or if they were to reach out and touch you, it would instantly put you to sleep. Um, now, the rose bushes so far do not seem to be moving toward you, um, but it is something to be aware of as you proceed through this section. Um, Unless you would like to try and do anything to uh, preemptively or proactively uh, protect yourselves from the sleeping rose. Just stay away from them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just keep away from them. Okay. Um, so just going straight through and kind of sticking to the middle in like a single file line. Yeah, basically. Okay. Good deal. Um, so, uh, you guys make it through, um, and uh, because you didn't touch them, they didn't try and touch you, and so you come to another fork in the road um, on the... Uh, on the left of you, there is... Um, like these these weird columns the the plant life on that side is gone it's just uh you know column after column they look kind of roman in nature um and then uh straight ahead there is a um uh a bit of chittering um You know what, all... Yeah, um... Lonnie and Felix, um... Give me, uh... Oh no, Lonnie has wild speak, so, um... From that path, uh, you you hear what sounds like a family having a picnic. Like a human family? No, like you you know it's it. You know that you're hearing animals talking right now. They're a little too far away for you to be able to detect what kind of animal. But it sounds like just a little family having you know the animal equivalent of a family picnic. And there's no sound off to your left, just the columns. And going to the left. Going to the left? I'm going to the left. Okay. Um, sounds a little too happy. <laughs> sounds too happy. Um, all right. I am not going there. <laughs> it appears that they're having a picnic. What kind of animal, I can't tell, but it's, just, it's a little too happy, a little too squirrely, if you will pardon the pun. <laughs> <laughs> just a bit suspicious. Not, yeah. They All right. Not getting my snacks. Agreed. Yeah. My snacks. All right. Um, so, you guys go down the columns and. Um, you get past maybe five or six columns, and you hear a uh, grating kind of shifting behind you. Um, do any of you turn around to look and see what's causing the noise? Yep. Yeah? Okay. Yep. Um, so... Kind of hang her head and go, oh, God. 
Um, so behind you, the columns are uh, kind of closing. Um, each pairing closes behind you, and um, you can see, uh, you know, it, it, it doesn't create like a full wall, but there's um, essentially really thick stained glass where there would be space. Would be space. Yeah. Um, and the stained glass doesn't have, like, you know, super specific images or anything. It's mostly just, uh, multiple pieces of colored glass. Um, a mosaic. A mosaic, yeah. Thank you. Um, and, uh, it, um, it doesn't seem to be doing anything other than making sure you don't backtrack. How shiny is this stained glass? How shiny? Like it? Are Are you asking if it's like, glossy? Can you, can you see a reflection in it? Uh, no. Okay, I don't need to worry about Caster. <laughs> if he can see himself, he's there. Yep. No. No. Uh. No reflection in it. Um, the, uh, the sun is kind of behind, like, the sun is coming through it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's pretty, it casts a bit of color on the ground, um, but overall is not, uh, other than, than making sure you can't backtrack through the maze, it doesn't seem to have much of an effect, um... So, uh, you guys can inspect it or move on. Completely up to you. What would you guys like to do? I'm going to inspect it. Okay. Um, how do you inspect it? Uh, I'm going to get about three feet away from one of them and just kind of use my magic and see if I can feel anything coming off of it. Okay. Um, so give me, uh, brains roll with magic. Actually, um, no, this is going to be a charm roll with magic. Um, and difficulty will be a 15. That's a nine and a four. Slame! Hey! Loaded. So with my, that's a total of 16. All right, perfect. Um, so uh, with that, um, you know that there is some kind of effect, um, that the, the glass itself, um, is supposed to have, um, and actually you said you're about three feet away? Yeah. Okay. Um, so... Uh, yeah, you, you recognize that it has, uh, some kind of magical effect. You're not entirely sure what the glass is supposed to do. Um, go ahead and roll me a, uh, flight roll. Difficulty of, uh, seven. With magic. Oh, that's a one, and... One. <laughs> All right. Ouch. Um. So that that is an epic fail. Of uh, yeah. That that was five below what you need. So um, you uh, you just get really drawn into the glass. Like this glass is beautiful. And you feel compelled to move a little bit closer. And the closer you get, 
the more you just get filled with like joy until you're about six, uh, six or so inches away and you double over in just hysterical laughter. Oh no. I hear the laughter and I turn around and I'm like, oh god damn it. <laughs> so, what would you like to do? Lonnie, Felix. I'm gonna go pick them up and try to get like get them away from it. You know, like try not to look at the glass and pick them up and like or like pull them like away from it. All right, uh, Felix. How about you? Felix is probably just gonna try and help. <laughs> All right. Like, so, like, uh, help by, um, like, going over and, and helping grab as well, or are you yeah, casting basically. something? Okay. <laughs> All right, so if I can get both of you to give me flight rolls, um... Not brawn? Nope, not brawn. This is gonna be flight. Uh, your difficulty, um... For this is going to be a 10, because neither of you are sure what affected soul. It is with magic, though. Alright, new dice. Let's go. 10 exactly! Ooh, nice! Alright, and Felix? Ten exactly. There we go. All Here's right. New dice. All right. Yeah. <laughs> um. Cool. So you both manage um to uh get to Seoul, uh where they are doubled over in laughter. Um. You feel the hysterical effect trying to like press down on you and force you into the laughter as well, but you were at least a little bit prepared going into it. And so um, while the urgency to get to your friend has not less or has lessened, the whatever uh, soul is finding hilarious is not affecting you. So you do manage to grab them um, and... Uh, Soul, if you'll th uh, roll flight with magic for me, and then um, both uh, Lonnie and Felix roll uh, brawn with, um, are you guys using magic, or are you just bodily trying to move them? No time for magic, must go. Must go okay. faster. Uh, so use your uh, mundane die. And Felix? Uh, bodily. Uh, bodily, whatever. okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool, so you will roll uh, brawn plus a d6. And soul got a 7? I got a 7. Okay. Rule 2d6, I got one on both. Oh no. <laughs> Alright. Wow. Felix, it's up to you. Oh no, no! Let's <laughs> 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 go! Oh no, guys. <laughs> no. What did you get? Oh, it up to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do. So you're it all all you have to do is you're gonna roll your brawn die. Um and you're gonna roll a uh D six. So you're gonna roll one D eight and one D six. You can oh, do it. Stop this. And then you're gonna add a plus one. Thirteen. 
Yes. Beautiful. All right. Um. So. I knew. I told you you could do it. Yeah. Uh. So that is actually an epic success. Uh. You just got there faster, and like by the time Lonnie even tried to help, he he was just kind of helping. You know, for principle because. <laughs> You you practically had soul picked up. Like, you were just like, we're getting you out of whatever this is. Whatever is happening is not happening anymore. No. <laughs> we out. Heck yeah, no. Not today. Not nope. today. <laughs> All right. Um, so, uh, you guys managed to get them out. Um, soul is still giggly even once you get them out away from the stained glass um, and, you know, reflected color on the ground. Um, but the the hysteria seems to be fading as you get further away from that. Um, so the, the pillars keep closing behind you, uh, which means that you guys are essentially racing to get away from more colored light, um, but you do eventually come to another uh, fork. One way is um, what looks like a series of doors on either side of the hedge, um, just like door after door after door after door with no space in between, and then on uh, the right is... Um, <clears throat> You, you, you can actually see through, and there's, like, a little courtyard um, and some blocks with painting on top of them. You're too far away to see what's on top of the blocks, but it looks like you might be able to move them. I'm not taking this time. <laughs> I, I don't like I having got... a door behind me when I can't see what could possibly come out of it, so... It's a nice open courtyard if we do have to fight something I think would be the best bet. Yeah, the courtyard seems the best option. Alright. You guys can go first. <laughs> <laughs> Don't touch anything. That. Don't look at anything too I closely. I didn't touch it. <laughs> um, then just don't touch it. And and Soul does still find everything very funny. It's like it it it's one of those like you know in the middle of the night uh when you really should be asleep already but you just can't and you also just can't stop laughing like you you look over and you see a book is slightly like not aligned with others, and for some reason, that's the funniest book that you've ever seen in your life. It's that. That's what's happening to Soul right now. Delirious. Just delirious, like slap happy, <laughs> what in the world joy for no reason. Um, so, uh, you guys go into the courtyard, and. Um, like I said, there are a few benches. Um, there's uh, kind of a wrought iron gate on the opposite uh, side of the courtyard, um, but it is completely closed right now. And then in the middle, um, kind of surrounded by a circle of stones, is a um, big uh, puzzle that uh, would kind of remind you guys of um, those little puzzles that, like, you move the tiles sliding, around. Yeah. yeah. So it's, puzzles, it's, yeah. A, it's a sliding tile puzzle. Um, and, uh, and it looks like... Um, like, there's, there's images on all visible sides of it. So, you know that this could potentially create more than one picture. Oh, so they're cubes, right? Yeah, they're, they're cubes. Okay. Um, and so, you know this could potentially uh, create more than one puzzle. Um, and then, 
like I said, there's a circle of stones around it and a wrought iron gate on the opposite side that is closed. Don't step in the circle. Let me go try the gate first. I'll be right back. You do that. Go for it. All right. So, uh, the, <laughs> so the gate appears to be fused <laughs> shut. There's no lock that you can see, um, but you also don't see any light coming through what would normally be a slit between two doors. Ah, hmm. uh, yes. Let's go to the one that doesn't have doors. <laughs> All right, giggles. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I go back and I'm like, well, the door is like fused shut. So, um, I guess next let's figure out like which picture we want to make. Or I could just go into the circle. Don't I mean, go in the circle. Well, we, well, we just have to. We might have to save you again, but I mean, like, we could do that. But like, what? There's like pictures on all sides. So, what picture do we want to make? Maybe whatever we make will like appear, and something bad will happen. I don't know. So, like, let's pick, figure out what we want to fight first. <laughs> if right. whatever we make appears, can we make a cake? I mean, we can do that later. <laughs> Okay, so you're trying to figure out what the possible images are? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, each of you give me, um, well, are you, uh, just using your eyes or are you using magic? Yeah, I'm just, like, circling the circle, honestly. Okay. Yeah. So you're just, like eyeing it to try and figure out what the pictures are. Yeah. Okay. So, um, give me brains rolls, difficulty of... Call it 11. All of us? Yeah. Common sense die or no? Everyone who's sense. doing it. Um, no, not on this. Oh. That's a 12. Oh, wait, all right. 10 more Ooh. I spent two birthday tokens. Uh, that's a nat 20, soul. That's a nat 20. Hell yeah, re-roll that. Oh, shit. That's an explosion. A 15, alright. <laughs> Hell yeah. Maybe I'll just keep my mercy tokens and let them do the work. It, I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so okay. Mine, which isn't terrible. Too fast, but... And then, uh, Felix, what did you get? 12. Twelve. All right. Uh, so we have one standard success and one. Uh, that's twenty-four more than you need. So that's a tier four epic success. Sweet. Um. And uh, yeah. So puzzles are not really Lonnie's thing. Um and. So as he circles it, he just kind of realizes, uh, okay, so, um, yeah, this, this, it, 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 those are some, pictures. there are pictures, yeah, this is definitely a puzzle, is 100% a puzzle. um, and Felix, you're able to, uh, determine that one of the faces, um, is definitely, um, some kind of, uh, like, Egyptian animal. You think it might be a sphinx. Um, Sol, you also recognize the sphinx, um, but there's also uh, what looks to be something humanoid that has antlers, um, and there is a... Uh, a person that kind of looks a lot like the headmaster, but also has wings. And then there's a fourth image that you're not entirely sure what it is. There's only one face of that image that's visible. 
Um, but it has a lot of blue on that one spot that you can see. Um, so think about which one of those three, or which one of those you would like to go for. Um, and we're going to hop over to Ellis real quick. Um, Ellis is actually reading or pretending to read and actually listening to gossip? He is actually reading. Okay. Um, is it um, fun reading or is he studying, essentially? He is fun reading. Fun reading. All right. About um, space. <laughs> About space. Hell He's reading yeah. Packing for Mars, The Curious Science of Life in the Void. I love it. <laughs> All right. That is specific. Very that specific. is super specific. Okay. Um, so, cool. Um, is he just curious or is he trying to, like, learn how to prepare for his potential fu future as the first magical astronaut? He, he's preparing, yes. Okay. Um, so, uh, give me a brains roll. Uh, this is going to be with magic because he's preparing for space in a mundane way, but he is also just thinking about how he can do it magically, how he can get there with magic. So, give me a brains roll um, with magic. Uh, difficulty of... Um, yeah, so basically every, every time Ellis is rolling for, like, preparing for space, it's going to be brains with magic. And this one, I'll be very, very surprised if you get this. You'll have to explode a few times, um, but every point that you get toward this goal is how much it lowers for the next time you try it, okay? okay. So um, the mastery score for magical space travel is 120. So again... You're not actually failing, you're just working toward a mastery. Alright, gotcha. Um, so that'll be brains plus magic, and you will use your buff. So, I got 18. Alright. Cool. Good deal. Um, so, I mean, that that's almost one-sixth of the way toward mastery. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, Ellis is just super hyped as always, by all the, the space uh, stuff, and, you know, get, get, some, get some good ideas that he can ask a teacher about later. Um, and uh, additionally, because you got above a 10, um, Ellis gets a little distracted uh, at one point by... Um, some rowdy teens who walk by talking about how the, uh, uh, the upperclassmen who had gone into the, um, obstacle course earlier in the day almost died. Hmm. Well, now Ellis is a little curious. <laughs> <laughs> Would he like to do anything with that curiosity? I, I think Ellis is going to go in the maze, because he's kind of like, I bet I could do it and live. He's a little cocky sometimes. All right. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so the, the hedge opens up as he approaches and then closes up behind him. Um... And uh, you, you have, or he has the same options that the others did. There's just plain hedge straight ahead, um, a dead end to the right, and uh, rose bushes down on the left. I mean, I think he's going to go towards the plain hedges, actually. Okay. Um, 
so he's going down. Uh, nothing really happens in this section. Like, the hedges just seem super boring. Um, and it, he's definitely starting to wonder why in the world upperclassmen almost died when <laughs> nothing has happened yet. Um, but he does come to another uh, fork in the road. Um, to the left, there's, uh, a, a weird scent that he imagines is probably some kind of baked good, but it's not one that he's ever smelled before. Um, straight ahead is more plain hedge, um, but there's a little bit of sparkle um, just at the edge of his, uh, eye line, and then over to the right, um, there's, uh, what looks like hopscotch grown in the ground. Well, I imagine that Raddy Coda is going to be intrigued by this baked good smell and kind of go towards that way, and Ellis is gonna follow him. Okay, perfect. Um, so he'll be going down that way. We're going to hop back over real quick to, uh, the puzzle. What image do you guys want to try and solve? How about, I guess, you want to do the winged headmaster or the sphinx? Mm -hmm. I feel like the winged headmaster would be like, like dark headmaster, like, you would have to, like, fight and defeat them. But they have wings, and super magic, and... I don't know, just... I go try the gate again. <laughs> uh, the, the gate is still not doing anything, but this time when you touch it, it makes, like, a... <laughs> sound. <laughs> Bro. Bro, if we only have so many strikes, please do not get all the strikes. Try and go. Okay. Sorry. And it, it so uh, to specify, the, it is uh, kind of butterfly wings um, on the headmaster. Hmm. Is anyone good at riddles? Because I feel like if we went to Sphinx and it appears we're going to have to answer some riddles. I'm pretty good at riddles. I guess. <laughs> let's, uh, let's do the headmaster, because that's like, I'm not sure what's going to happen with that, but I know if we get it wrong with the Sphinx, the Sphinx will eat us. That's how the stories go. Headmaster. But I want to know if I taste like a baked good. <laughs> You're going to be what? You're not going to know. What do you want to know that? <laughs> No, it seems like a good idea at the time. The at the time, of... time, not in hindsight. In hindsight, there will be no hindsight because you'll be dead and eaten. Exactly. Right. No such thing as hindsight. Maybe you can ask them when they poop you out. <laughs> can I? No. Oh. Uh, we'll do the possibly right, creepy headmaster. Let's uh, try yeah. it. All right. Um, so this is going to be a combined roll. Um, so I'm going to give you a difficulty score, um, but your three scores together are what have to add up to the difficulty score. Um, so for this, you guys can choose uh, either brawn or flight. If you use flight, you'll be um, rolling with magic. If you use brawn... Uh, you will have to enter the circle of stones, um, and then either use magic to boost your muscles or just use the mundane die. Um, Flight for magic? Uh, yeah, flight for magic. Mine's, so... I'm, with flight, I'm rolling with a DA. What are you guys rolling with? And you, you each make this decision. Yeah. I'm gonna go flight. <laughs> yeah, Alright. 
All right, so your difficulty to beat is a 35. Um, so, uh, we have one of you doing brawn, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so, uh, there we go. All right. Um, give me, uh, soul a charm roll difficulty of 10. With magic. Uh, seven, uh, two, and two sets. So eleven. All right, perfect. Um, so you feel uh like the this weird sense of judging. Um, kind of picking through your brain, um, and then it just kind of fades a little bit. And when it fades, all three of you show or see that the stone circle kind of lights up in green, and then the stones disappear. So now, if I can get each of you to make your rolls. Um, Soul, are you just using your muscles to move the... Blocks, or are you using magic to uh, help? Just my muscles. Okay, so you're going to roll your brawn plus a d6. Uh, Lonnie and Felix, you are both rolling flight plus a d4. And your applicable buffs. My brawn exploded. Yeah. Nice. Nine, ten. Six, All right. Fourteen. Sixteen total. Nine. Perfect. <laughs> Nine. All right. Uh, well, that brings you to exactly thirty-five. Um. <laughs> so, uh, you, um, you guys are able to work together to. Uh, get the picture to form, you know, the, the image of uh, your headmaster with the butterfly wings. Um, the cubes kind of seal so that it's one full picture, no longer multiple cubes. And um, out of the image, just this little pixie comes out and... It does look a lot like your headmaster, but you're pretty sure that your headmaster is not a pixie or a brownie or any other kind of uh, a sheath, but this definitely is. And it giggles um, and flies toward uh, Lonnie. Lonnie, if you can give me a... Uh, Actually, yeah, just what, what, what do you do as it flies toward you? Um, he knows it's not like if he hurts this thing, but he's just like, he's... <sighs> he wants, like, he's probably, like, throwing up some sort of, like, Shield in front of him. Okay. Um, just as a reaction. Okay, so just an instinctive shield. Yeah. So for him, that's probably going to be essentially a wall of fire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, cool. Give me um, a fight roll. This will be a difficulty of 13. With magic or whatever? With magic. Say. <laughs> I'm saying my daughter's wet. <laughs> five. 
A five. All right, that is eight below what you need. Yeah, he's just kind of like wildly like, oh! All right, um, so uh, Felix, Soul, I need flight rolls from each of you. Uh, difficulty of ten. Oh, jump no. out the way of my fire. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> my flight is a D4. Oh. <laughs> I exploded. Okay. Yay. Might just make please, please, one four. No. It's seven. It, now, it, this is with magic. Oh, okay. Yep. Eleven. Just a ten. <laughs> All right. Perfect. So um, the the fire instead of forming a concrete wall in front of Lonnie just kind of like shoots away from him, going Everywhere. kind of out and like a pulse away from him, radiating out. Um, in the uh, the hedges at the edge of the um, at the edge of the clearing all seem a little singed, but nothing's, nothing is on fire. It just burned and then went out. Um, but both Sol and Felix, uh, managed to, one, recognize that fire was coming toward them, and two, use their innate flight to just kind of, like, jump and then hover. So you are both in the air now. Um, the next, uh, the next thing that you do, you can use your travel strengths for, um, so keep that in mind. Um, <laughs> all right, Slim. Uh, and then, uh, I believe it is time for our bio break. Um, Felix is, uh, is it time? Or do we have any minute? Okay, yeah, cool. So we are going to go ahead and do our uh, bio break now. Um, it'll be about 10, 15 minutes. Um, and then we will uh, pick back up with uh, Ellis um, just to give JJ a bit of extra time. Welcome back, everyone. Hope you had a good bio break. And uh, we are... Going back to, uh, Ellis. Oh, oh my god, another hydrate. All right. <laughs> it is Ellis's turn. <laughs> All right. Um, so, Ellis and... Ratty Coda are headed for the uh, strange but alluring baked goods smell. And they come across uh, what looks like um, a children's playhouse. And there's a bit of smoke coming out of the chimney. Um, the... Uh, the... There, there's nowhere else to go. Um, it, it comes to kind of a dead end uh, at this house that, once again, is about the size of a children's playhouse. Um, so it's perfectly sized for Ellis and has a bit of smoke coming out of the chimney. Um, it's very clear that the uh, smell is coming from this house. Uh, no, the, it, it, it just, I mean, aside from the fact that it's randomly there and it's perfectly sized for him, but not necessarily for adults, uh, it just looks like a nice little house. Like it would be the perfect kind of clubhouse, no but way. the hedges have closed behind him. All right. 
Um, the front door will not open for him. Um, he, yeah, he kind of, he tries to pull on the door and the knob, actually, his hand goes through it. Are you looking for a place for Raddy Coda to try and go in? Um, give me a, uh, give me a flight roll, uh, difficulty will be a six. Um, just, um, no, you are rolling, uh, it, you're, you're directing your familiar to do something for you, so you will roll magic. A seven, all right. Um, so, uh, Raddy does manage to go, uh, find a, a little spot that, uh, he can slip through and go inside. Um, if you'll roll a d4 for me real quick. Did you roll? Oh, okay. Um, Alright. Um, so he, he gets through, um, and he's kind of running around, um, inspecting stuff. Uh, and um, is he trying to be sneaky right now? Or is he just trying to figure out what's going on? Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, inside, like, it doesn't really seem, uh, super strange or different to him. Um, he's like, yeah, it's just, it's just a little house. There's a, a bed and, um, there's some chairs and a table and, um, this smells really, really good. I think there's cheese. It's like sweet, but it's cheese. And, um... He gets closer to the, um, the oven and, uh, realizes that there's this tiny, plump person inside. In the oven? No, no, no. Sorry, not in the oven. In the house. Oh. N uh, like, <laughs> tending the oven. Jesus. I was like, Damn, when he gets morbid. when he gets closer to the oven, he realizes that there is a tiny plump person inside the house, next to the oven. <laughs> Damn, someone handsomely bread on their ass. <laughs> um, but this person does not see him. Okay. Um, so, uh, from inside you hear kind of a muffled, Oh, just a moment, dearie. Um, and if, if you couldn't actually understand that because my voice cracked in the middle of it, that was just a moment, dearie. Um, and... I, did, I like the voice cracking. Give character. Yeah, thank you, thank you. 
<laughs> like she was squeaking. Or yeah. Squeaking. Just a moment, dearie. Um, and uh, there's there's a little bit of of shuffling, uh, and she turns around, um, heads to the door, and opens it just a little bit, and and kind of peeks out and goes, "Yes, how can I help you?" Oh, I'm, I'm, I've got a pie in the, in the oven there. It's, it's a nice sweet cheese pie. Very creamy. Oh, I, I don't like to give out my name, dearie. Well, I, I, I live here. And she kind of opens the door a little bit and, and looks around and she goes, Oh, blast him! He's put me in the maze again! <laughs> I told him to stop doing that! And then she looks past you and, and kind of out and around and goes, Well, I do have a back door if you'd like to come in, dearie. No, no, you come in this door and then you leave out the back door. Otherwise, you'll be stuck on my lawn for a, quite a while. Alright. Um, so she let you in. Um, and, uh, offers you a, a spot of tea before you pass on through. There are. <laughs> she says, alright, alright, well. You know, just be be careful. You can't hear the other players. Um. Oh, the right. One of them is muted. Okay. Um, Ellis, can you say something real quick? Hello. Hello. There we go. Alright. Um, no, it, I, I had changed what channel Discord was going to audio-wise, um, and didn't realize that that channel wasn't also on this, uh, scene. So, that's why you can hear it. Um, alright, so, uh, you come in... Um, you turn down the T, uh, and, um, the, uh, windows all go really dark, like it is suddenly the middle of the night. Hmm. Are you sure you don't want to take me up on some hospitality? Um... I'm, I'm sure. I, I just, I just had a big lunch and I'm just pretty full. Alright. Give me a, uh, charm roll difficulty of eight. <laughs> I have such Sorry, bad anxiety a... right now. <laughs> yeah. Good job, though, not eating or drinking. <laughs> with, uh, with, with magic or... Uh, yeah, this will be with magic. Okay. Danger, danger. Oh, well, that's a 12, uh, right off the bat, so I, yeah. All right. Um, and yeah, you get to re-roll that. Okay. That's an explosion. So you're going to add, uh, your magic die and your second stat die roll and your plus one stat. Wow. The 17. Alright. So that is nine more than you needed. <laughs> um, would you like to use a uh, 
a single adversity token to make that uh, 10 more than you needed for an extra level of success? Yeah. Alright. Perfect. So just subtract that. I don't that. like this situation, so yeah. <laughs> Alright. Um, perfect. So, uh, as you say that, um, this, uh, there, you can see, like, a string, um, come from approximately your chest and go and connect to her, and it just kind of gently vibrates. And the light slowly comes up um, on the outside, and the uh, the woman's face kind of twists into a bit of a smirk, and there's a twinkle in her eyes, and she says, "Oh." You're a smart one, aren't you, you wee lads? I like Very to well, think then. so. <laughs> well, we shan't play today. But I'll make sure to tell the others about you. Now you go on with your little rat friend, get on out of here, finish your maze. Alright, thank, thank, thank you. <laughs> and of he course. gets the hell out of there. <laughs> Alright. So, uh, he goes through the door, and as she's closing it behind him, she says, Can't wait to see you again, little lads. Oh. And then the door <laughs> closes. And the house disappears. Thank goodness. <laughs> is, is, is there, like, another way out of the maze now, or do I have to go back? Um, so there's two things, uh, that you can see. There's on one side a closed and sealed wrought iron gate. Um, on your other side, there's, uh, like, it, it looks to be gingerbread walls, complete with icing. I'm, I'm gonna... Um, grab Raddy Coda and try to go towards that gate, because I know he wants to go towards the gingerbread walls, and the sweets didn't do us too well last time. <laughs> Alright, so uh, the gate is locked. Um, through it, you can see your classmates. Uh -huh. And uh, just as you come up to the gate, you see Lonnie pulse out with fire. Um, but it, it doesn't quite have a chance to reach you. Mm. So. Um. The attempted wall of fire was not successful. The little pixie, uh, continues, flies towards you, and lands directly on the tip of your nose. Lonnie. And you see it try to talk, but the only thing that comes out is this, like, the sound of a, a tiny bell, just tingling, tingling, tingling. Tingling, tingling. Do either of you speak, uh, speak the language of the sheriff folk? By chance? Oh, no. Bells. No. It jumps into your hand. I can't. And leans against your thumb. I can't understand you. I'm sorry, I can talk to... 
if you want to, if you want to tell Pepper, then maybe Pepper can tell me. I don't think Pepper can understand this, this language. Pepper just kind of like headbutts you. <laughs> Um, the, uh... Can it understand me? It can understand you, or at least it seems to understand you. It, it starts, uh, kind of, like, it, it stomps a little bit to get your attention back on it instead of on Pepper, and then is, uh, kind of doing, like, charades. <laughs> um... Give me, uh, to understand the charades, you can, um, either roll, yeah, you can either roll, uh, charm with your, um, magic die, or just brains. Wait, you didn't give me a difficulty. Please. Oh yeah, sorry. It is uh the difficulty for it is a ten. Yeah. Sorry, I got distracted by the giggly whispers in my ear. <laughs> me too. <laughs> And if anyone else, uh, 12. 12? Okay. Um, cool. So, um, the, the tiny pixie version of your headmaster, uh, seems to be indicating that it needs, uh, hair. Lonnie, what is it doing? It wants... It wants hair twirled. It wants its hair twirled because I'm just gonna smoke a bush its head if I try that. No, like it it wants a hair that has been twirled. Sounds totally normal. <laughs> <laughs> do, do not give anything that belongs to you to a thief. Um. Well. Gee. I should look around for another hair that's not from one of us. Too bad, so sad that that student. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't want to give it any of our hair. I like look around with magic and like trying to see if I can find like a hair from like another student. Uh, sure. So you're looking around with magic for. Someone's discarded hair. Well, like, you know, so, like, long hair falls out all the time. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's gonna be a grit roll with magic, difficulty of twelve. Galaxy D4. <laughs> I have gone blind temporarily. <laughs> Two ones. Two right ones. Alright. Um, yep. So that is ten uh, below what you needed. Um, make sure to take your adversity tokens. Oh, that's, uh, that's a, that's a three, so I have a plus one. 
Okay, so that's nine below what you needed. It means it's only one tier of epic failure. Oh, man. Um... So, uh, yeah, you kind of cast out your magic trying to find, uh, hair, and, um, your magic didn't quite understand the assignment, so each of you lose three hairs. They just fall out of your heads. Only three hairs, but, uh, the pixie does zoom to try and catch one. Can I, like... Can I stop it? <laughs> you may certainly try. How would you guys like to try it? Or um... how? Yeah. Like, are you reaching what? out to catch him with your hands? Are you... Puff of air at it. Like, a I'm puff of air? First, yeah. Okay. Um, so that'll be... Flight. And remember, all three of you lost it? Um... So... If you're, um... If you're trying to knock it off course with air, the difficulty is going to be flight 10. If you are trying to catch it, the difficulty is going to be flight uh, 12. And if you, um, if you want to do something else magical, let me know. I'm going to put up a shield. Okay. Um, so a shield will be, um, is it, uh, like a shield of strength or a shield of absorption? Uh, absorption. Okay. So that is going to be a grit difficulty of, that'll be an eight. And that's with the magic die? With magic. So that's a ten with one adversity token to make it count. So five. Okay. And three and one. Ten. Ten. Alright. And uh Felix. Uh I um was just aiming to sort of use the air and got a five. Um <laughs> All right. <laughs> so the uh the pixie catches your hair and um zooms over to the gate um, and starts twirling the hair around one of the uh, spires? Yeah, one, one of the one of the poles or whatever they're called the of the gate. Poles. Yeah. Um, which means that uh, Ellis the Pixie with Felix's hair is now about a foot away from your face. Oh, oh god. Um. Hmm. Uh. I was not expecting this. Um. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. But it does have one of your classmates' hairs and is doing something to the gate with it. Can, can I reach through the gate and try to take the hairs from it? <laughs> uh, you can try, yeah. Alright, I'm um, gonna try that. <laughs> Alright, that is gonna be an opposed flight roll. Um, so I will roll its flight die, you will roll your flight die, 
Um, and, uh, are you, uh, using magic at all to try and catch it, or are you just, um, trying to snatch with your fingers? Just trying to snatch. Okay. Oh, my camera froze again. Yeah. I don't know right. how long it's been like that. There we go. All right. All right, so I got a 12. And so I just roll my just the flight die? Uh, yeah, just the flight die. All right. I got a one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so... You, uh... You reach out, you try and grab it. It is way too fast for you, and you actually end up grabbing the uh, gate instead, and you hear... And you cannot... unclench your fist from oh, around no. the gate. Oh, no. Okay. Um, so the pixie finishes twirling the hair around the gate and the hair just kind of seems to dissolve into the gate. Um, and you think it might be able to open now, but you are still stuck to the gate. Yeah. <laughs> um. So what would you like to do? Do I know any way to get my hand off this gate at all? Um... <laughs> uh, so... You know some cleaning spells that work to get sticky stuff um, off of surfaces. Sticky? It doesn't feel sticky, but you know that your hand is stuck. That's the only thing that you would have actually learned. But you can try to just negotiate with the magic to unstick your hand. I think that would be better for me, yes. Okay. So um, that is going to be a charm roll. Your difficulty for this oh, is wow. a 10. All right. Do I use magic or just, just charm? This will be with magic. Right, yeah. Because cool. you're negotiating with the magic, so you are using magic. No, no, no. You stay off the table, okay? Fourteen. Fourteen. All right. Um, so you kind of negotiate with it, and uh, you feel your your hand um, is free, and you hear, ding. Apparently, I'm having issues with high pitches today. But yeah, you, you hear like a, you know, the opposite of the... Um, and the gate kind of glows and then disappears in the same green as the stones from earlier. Um, and so the, the only paths available to you are the... Uh, gingerbread, uh, or going back the way of the disappeared house, though it seems to still be a dead end on the other side. I guess I go towards the gingerbread. Hesitantly. Yep. Gate has completely dissolved. Do I see, um, classmate on the other side? Yeah. Hey, what's up? Hey, hey. You smell like sugar. What do you have? <laughs> you, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. Try us. I, uh, there was a, there was a house and, and a creepy lady and so, I don't know what exactly happened. She, she offered me food and I didn't take any and then she just told me to leave and her house disappeared. You're better than her. I mean, I've read enough stories to learn that taking food from people is never a good idea, so... Yeah. <laughs> so, how are we getting out of here? It's not eating any food given to us by anyone. 
in this maze. <laughs> I don't care if you know them or not. Like, you, you want a cookie, Lonnie? I mean, how do we even know? How do we even know that's Ellis? Lonnie, you want a cookie? Huh? <laughs> you want a cookie? I do not want anything from you, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Okay, prove prove your Ellis. What's my what's my animal's name? Uh, uh, and Ellis gets really panicked, and he's like, "A pepper, pepper, pepper Jack." <laughs> <laughs> and Lonnie just doubles over. It's like, yeah, it's you, Ellis. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Go go ahead and take a uh, a bonus adversity token, Ellis. Oh yay. Pepper Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh. Um, alright, so where to where to next? What what we got? You've got two dead ends and one hall of gingerbread and icing. Oh, we are so going down there. Do not <laughs> uh, eat anything. I... Somebody, somebody try to stop up. me. Oh. Try <laughs> to stop me. Right, I, I, I would like I to. Have, I would like to find a spell that, like, um, like. The, in the Matrix, when like Neo's mouth like disappears, mm -hmm. I want to do that. To no. <laughs> no eating. <laughs> no eating. Oh God. Okay. Um. That's gonna be you never grit. Read Hansel and Gretel. Jeez. Grit. Um, and this is not something that you would have learned in school, so that's gonna be Grit with Magic, difficulty of 16. Yep. Where did they all go? I swear. I don't. You didn't hand that one back. Yeah, I did. I put it back in your little in, you, over there. I found it. One. It's all right. I found okay. one. Okay. Sixteen. Oh gosh. Bring it on. Sixteen. Fifteen. Ominous. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, soul, your mouth closes over. Um, so, uh, you can. You can, you can try and roll to, uh, undo it. Um, it would be. Same kind of roll. It would be a grit difficulty of 16 uh, with magic if you want to try and. I am trying. Oh, yes. There's an 11, <laughs> and a 4, and a 1. 16. <laughs> nope. Yeah. 17. Yeah, because you do have a plus like one that. magic for grit. So yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So your your mouth closes over, and and you're just like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and then it opens again, and you are just very pleased with yourself for getting yourself out of that. All right. You eat anything in here? The other's gonna have to save you because I'm not pitching in. I'm gonna make you eat it. How about that? Oh, yeah, I would love that. Oh, how about nobody eats anything? 
<laughs> Please. <laughs> if it smells good, I'm no. gonna eat it. <laughs> no. If Ellis had eaten what that old lady was gonna give him, he would have probably been here for like a thousand years. He would have been stuck in the maze easily. That's okay. As long as there's food, I'm good. But what if they... Alright, well, good to know. <laughs> Alright, so you guys proceed into the gingerbread hall? Yes. Yes. Alright. Um, so the, uh... You, you're going down the hall. You don't hear anything. You don't see anything. You don't smell anything changing. It just seems like... It's a regular hall that happens to be made out of gingerbread and icing. I'm gonna poke the wall. No. You're gonna what? <laughs> I'm gonna poke the wall. I gotta see if it's like properly baked gingerbread before I eat it. Can, no. All right. So you're you're uh, poking the actual wall part, not the icing seams. Yes. Okay. Um. It certainly feels like it might be made out of gingerbread. Has the right texture and a little bit of give. I'm gonna look at my companions and just kind of get this smug look on my face and go, I'm eating this. Hey, my guess. No. <laughs> yes. This is gonna go so far. It's right either. Ahead. It's either I eat this or I lick the icing. What's what? Pick one. Uh, Neva, preferably. No, that's not. That's Which not one of the choices. <laughs> so it's either are you? Eat or lick. I'm continuing. Okay. this point <laughs> all right so we're gonna go with licking yeah so you lick it it tastes like the best buttercream icing you have ever had it is just overwhelmingly delicious sweet warm moist why is it moving on your tongue? Why is it moving on your tongue? What is this? It still tastes really, really good, but it is wriggling on your tongue, down your throat. Oh, no. Give me a grit roll, difficulty of 18. Oh, no! With magic? With magic. <clears throat> I'll finish this maze by myself. <laughs> Oh, that's a 12 on my grit. Hmm? That's an 8. And a 3 for my magic, so... 23! Alright. So, um... With that epic success, uh... You, you have swallowed it just kind of instinctively. Um, and you feel it starting to, like royal and bubble and and move in your stomach but then your magic kind of suppresses it and it stops and there's like the feeling of pop rocks but in your stomach for just a moment and then everything is still and you don't feel any got... bad effects from it nothing but you definitely have no idea what that was don't worry about it nothing happened oh we're gonna, you know, we're just gonna, because nope. you're saying that makes me think something happens. Not, we're just going to continue on. Not worry about that. We're not going to lick the walls anymore. That's suspicious in itself. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Nothing. I don't know what you're talking about. Aha. Uh -huh. Very believable. Ellis just shakes his head. Just going to keep walking forward. Let's go. <laughs> I mean, All sure, right. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, uh, they licked the icing that uh, acts as a seam for the 
walls of the maze that they're in. It's a gingerbread hall with icing that moves on its own and wriggles down your throat. Oh, oh, no, no. <laughs> no. So you keep going um, and you, you reach uh, another room. Uh, this one, there's, um, there's actually like a ceiling to this part of the maze. And you don't see any um, doors or other entries. Uh, and this is the, the only time that you've ever seen a ceiling in the obstacle course maze. What do you guys do? Um... It, it just kind of looks like uh, a courtyard, but the courtyard has a ceiling for some reason. Um, and there's a bit of ambient light. Um, it is definitely dimmer in this part of the maze than the other parts. You're, you're not entirely sure where the light is coming from, but you can see decently. Um, there's like some pillows and uh, things spread out on the grass. Are there any other exits? Nope. Is that was just the way we came in? You what? Is it just the way we came in? Yep, just the way you came in. pillows would have been included in year one domestics so <laughs> you just do it you, it you know it essentially it uh can't hear you zan yeah zan can't hear you I saw hand gestures on stream, but no words. Oh yes, exactly that. Oh good, okay. And can you guys Yay! hear us again? Yay! All right. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, Lonnie tried to use a pillow fluffing uh, domestic charm. Um, the pillow kind of rose in the air, fluffed itself, and then sat back down. Nothing seemed weird about it, um, and there was nothing underneath. How big are these pillows? They're floor pillows. Um, they're they're mostly meant for people to sit on them, so they're fairly large. I'm gonna use my magic to throw one at Lonnie. <laughs> oh no! Okay. <laughs> All right. Um. So. <clears throat> That's going to be a... Um... Is Soul trying to, uh, like, essentially attack him with the pillow? Or just, like... Uh, 
Like, what, what, is, what is the purpose of throwing the pillow at Lonnie? Just kind of throw it at him and see if anything happens. If it hits well, good on me. Okay. Um, this is so revenge. Both revenge of you... <laughs> so both of you roll flight with magic die. Whoever gets the highest. You two are actual disasters. <laughs> you know, I, didn't, I was trying to keep us safe. I'm sorry. <laughs> who's, who's the child here throwing pillows? Okay. <laughs> so there's a 10 total. 11, sorry, with my stat. <laughs> Alright. Um... So, uh, the pillow launches toward Lonnie and then is immediately engulfed in flames. <laughs> Always fire! <laughs> yeah. So what else would you guys like to do? Do I know anything, like, water-based to put the fire out? Um... At this point, you wouldn't know a specific uh, spell for it, but, um, I mean, magic is very instinctive, so you might be able to um, to put it out. Um, I'd say... Actually, no, you, you might have learned a watering charm already um, in, like, domestics and gardening so yeah um give me a charm roll difficulty of five I'm using this 12-sided dice a lot today <laughs> <laughs> 13 all right um, yeah, so, uh, you thoroughly douse that pillow in water, um, honestly a bit overkill, but it's definitely not gonna light everything else on fire, and, uh, you think that the spot of grass that it's on is probably gonna have a better chance at growing than all the other grass in the area. <laughs> And Ellis is just going to kind of shake his head and look at Solari and say, let's not do that again. <laughs> okay. Or you to know we could. Or, or we couldn't. <laughs> See what happens. Ellis is just going to kind of back away from them. <laughs> Felix is going to join Ellis because <laughs> yikes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, anything else that you guys want to do in uh, this room that has a ceiling where none of the rest of the maze has a ceiling? Hmm. What type of ceiling is it? That is the correct question. You okay. look up <laughs> and you see what appears to be the night sky. But it's not actual night. It's like someone has poked holes in the ceiling in the shape of constellations. So, uh, soul. I think Ellis, oh, okay. <laughs> or, yeah, it, it, what, what would Ellis like to do? Ellis just kind of wants to lay on the ground and look at it and see how accurate the constellations are. Fantastic. Um, Felix, Lonnie, Sol, would any of you like to do anything regarding the ceiling? Hmm. I'm going to throw a pillow at it. Oh, dear lord. All right. Give me a brawn roll difficulty of six. No magic. No magic? No magic. Five. 
Alright, so you toss it up, it doesn't hit the ceiling, but it does fall onto your face. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> my, my dangle noodle. I'm sorry, caster. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lonnie, Felix, do either of you do anything? I'll take a seat. Alright. Not on a pillow. Not on a pillow. Are you looking at the ceiling? No, I'm kind of waiting for the others to figure it out. Okay. Um, Felix? Uh, Felix is kind of just staring upwards like, what? Okay. Um, and he's debating if he could possibly throw a pillow up there and get any more height than Sol did. All right. Um, <laughs> it'll be the the same brawn difficulty six if you decide to do it. Okay. Um, How so, high up is the ceiling? Uh, uh, like, oh. The ceiling is about twelve. Uh, no, sorry. It's it's about. Uh, it's about 10 feet up. Okay. Okay, so I got a one. <laughs> oh no! Beautiful. Uh, you, you try to throw it, but you manage to just full-on hit yourself in the face with the pillow. Your I... hand did not let go. I don't know what happened there, but sure. Yep. But, uh, it's, it seems like a pretty good pillow. It's like, you know, down... You've got a couple of feathers that poked you in the nose. <laughs> Amazing. Alright, perfect. <laughs> that is another bronze six roll. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> can he use magic? Uh, yeah, he can use magic. Six. Seven. All right. Um, so you do uh, hit the ceiling with the pillow, and the pillow just kind of stays on the ceiling. <sighs> All right. Um, so that is a flight roll. Uh, difficulty of... It's going to be a difficulty of eight. And is anyone else jumping up as well? Yes. Okay. Um, so... It's going to be flight difficulty of eight for each of you. Go ahead and give me your rolls. Is that with magic or? Uh, yeah, that is with magic. You're essentially trying to fly. Our first one was a three, a four, and a three. Three, four, and three, so that is a ten. Ellis or Felix uh, jumping slash flying? Well, Ellis is going to tear off a bit of his shirt first and wrap his hand in it because he already got his hand stuck to something. <laughs> <laughs> so he's being Good a little deal. cautious. Yeah. That's <laughs> and fair. Then he, That's then, fair. He will, then he will jump. <laughs> okay. Uh, try to fly. Um, cool. Felix oh, before... Okay. Um, so, Felix, go ahead and give me your, uh, jump roll. It's flight with magic, difficulty of eight. Um, but before, uh, Ellis jumps up, uh, he was inspecting the, um, accuracy. So give me a brains roll, difficulty 12. Um, and this would be mundane. So use your d6 with it. Great. 
drink. Twelve? I got eight. Okay. Um, so... It... It looks about right to you, um, but this isn't, uh, like the, all of the constellations look right, but you're not 100% sure whether they're in the right spots of the sky. Um, and then go ahead and give me flight plus magic. All right, fantastic. So all of you manage to fly up uh, to the ceiling. Once you get about um, a foot away from it, uh, gravity feels a little bit different, and um, you uh, you all end up kind of catching yourself on the ceiling, which is now suddenly the floor. And from your spot on the floor ceiling, you can see a door that wasn't there before. That seems to lead into um, a, uh, or sorry, a, a, an entryway that wasn't there before. That seems to lead into uh, what looks almost identical to the uh, hall just outside your dorms. Ellis is just like giggling he's giddy he's like oh this is fun <laughs> um there is another uh door kind of behind you guys that one um is like a big uh like golden super ornate door and it is closed you cannot see what is beyond it kind of want to touch the door but also I don't. But you what? But I also do not. <laughs> I'm just going to start walking towards the dorm, Paul. Yeah, same. Shiny doesn't always mean good. <laughs> Ellis is also going towards the dorm hall. What's Lonnie gonna do? to the dorm yeah. all right so you guys head into the uh, dorm hall as soon as the last one of you uh, gets through the entryway you hear what sounds like about a hundred doors slam shut hmm. suspicious that's totally not ominous <clears throat> what do I see if I look behind me? Uh, behind you just appears to be a void. Oh. There's no door, but there's definitely no courtyard or pillows or night sky. It's just black. Uh, it still appears to be the hall leading to your dorm. Uh, go ahead, all of you. Give me um, brains checks. Um, 
and I imagine you're talking through what just happened together, so this will be combined. Um, so all four of you will roll. Um, this isn't going to be, this will be just straight brains, no magic die, no mundane die. Um, shared difficulty of 35. 18. 18. 19. Oh, Brainy bunch. You guys, you guys, <laughs> Wait. got fucking deep bunnies, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> I am with my fucking puny D10. <laughs> 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 That's a okay, Nice. Mm, Thirteen. <laughs> Thirteen. Alright. With the explosion? Yeah. Alright. Ten in the Damn, okay. Um, alright, so I helped. You helped. <laughs> you did. Um. Yeah. Alright, so that is definitely an epic success. Uh. Yeah, it's yep, so that is 23 all. more than you needed. Um, so you guys are looking around. The first thing that you notice is that none of you have shadows. Is it bright? Oh, I don't like that. There's also... There are windows, but you can't see anything through the windows. They are also just completely dark. And you're able to look around and see just like if there was full light, but you don't see any kind of lights on the ceilings or on the walls. And you don't hear the telltale sound of a boarding school. Seems like it's just the four of you in this hall that is normally quite busy. Can the mommy like sniff the air and be like... I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, he says that. Yeah. All right. Ellis mm -hmm. wants to go look for, like, his bed. Okay. <laughs> Stay with us, please. This is weird. <laughs> I don't like this. Ellis uh, kind of sighs see. and says, okay, fine. <laughs> um... Puts his hands in his pockets. <laughs> I mean, do you not realize, like, there's no, do you hear... Any foot traffic? Do you hear any people? Like, we don't have shadows. Well, what no. else am I supposed to do? <laughs> he kind of <laughs> puts his hands up. <laughs> Stay with the group. For safety, I... probably. Yes. I vote we go back through the void, because this is creepy. I ain't going towards no void. <laughs> Voids are creepier. I think going back to the void is an option. We gotta find out what's going on here. So but also, no. Hmm. I mean, we've, we've, we've all survived thus far. Some of us, some of us more than others. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> it didn't happen. It didn't. Could've. It didn't happen. Nothing happened. Uh -huh. We're flying if we're going forward. All right. Let's go. So you then. guys are going uh, towards your dorms to see if your belongings are there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So as you move through the school happen. and you get to the actual dormitories, uh, you realize that there, there's like almost no furniture. And when you reach the first one of your dorms, none of your stuff is there. There are no personal effects in this dorm whatsoever. Only the things that are built into the building itself. Anyone know what year it is? I mean, this is just the facade. Like, um, can I go to the, one of the windows and look out and see if I can see anything? 
Yeah, are you just looking with your eyes or are you trying to look with magic? There's nothing. Can Alice punch through one of the windows? Uh, yeah, give me a fight roll. Difficulty of, um... Difficulty of, like, 12. Oh, you can dear use Lord. your mundane die. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I have the I have the D twenty for fight, so. Uh, I got a four. Oh. <laughs> All right. So, uh, your yeah, your <laughs> your hand is like immediately visibly bruised. Great. <laughs> and uh, Ratty Coda. Just, it kind of like wriggles. He's like, what, what are you doing? <laughs> Why? <laughs> okay. Um, so that is going to be a charm roll. Uh, difficulty of 15 with magic. Oh. <gasps> Eleven. Yeah. Okay. Um. So again, you don't really see anything. You don't sense anything. It's just black out there. Um. If I can get all of you to give me brains rolls. Uh, difficulty of five. No matter. Oh no! <laughs> I got Five. a two. Thirteen. <laughs> Twelve. Thirteen. Alright, so a uh, five for Lonnie, a two for Ellis. Yeah. God, and then it. Yeah, are, are you gonna yeah, use. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, so everyone succeeds. Um, both uh, Soul and Felix uh, were 12 and 13, right? Yep. Okay. Um, so all of you um, are, are focusing really hard. You're using your magic to try and, you know, find anything that is, you know, different. And, um... Are we supposed to use magic for that roll? Oh yeah, you are supposed to use magic for that roll. Uh, it would have been fine. I'm going to take my first go card. Okay. <laughs> um... I didn't use magic either. It, okay, it roll your magic three. die. It would have been six. Okay, so yeah, take take your adversity token back. Okay. Um, or your three. Uh, oh wait, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yes. Um. So uh, you um, you kind of. You hear uh, some, like, quiet crying coming from one of the other dorm rooms, just a bit down the hall. This is the first hint of any, uh, any other person or being in this version of your dorms that you've heard the entire time. So it's just like, okay, let's get on with it. Let's go go towards the noise. <laughs> Nothing else to do, he shrugs. Alice. Alice, my baby. How about you let me go first? 
<laughs> okay, I have no problem with that. <laughs> Um, and both Phoenix and Lonnie have uh, BRB'd real quick. Alright. Lonnie is back. Um, I heard. I, I, yeah. Okay. I just muted myself. Can everybody hear me too? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, what is Lonnie going to do? Yeah, you can definitely try and sneak. It's going to be a uh, flight roll difficulty of 12 with magic. And uh, our soul and um, Ellis also trying to sneak. No. Twelve with magic? Yep. Ellis is kind of hiding behind Soul. Soul's just gonna power through. <laughs> like nah. Four? Yeah. Okay. Um, alright. So uh Lonnie tries to sneak, but ends up tripping on thin air and stumbling forward until he is in the dead center of the uh, doorway to the room with the crying person. Um, and inside is a young girl who looks a lot like Felix. And she is sitting in the middle of the floor with a picture of Felix crying. Bud, you know her? Is that not your sister? Uh, I don't think JJ's here right now. Yeah, I think he's still BRB'd. Um, he, uh... He just kind of says, uh, uh, Alexia? But she doesn't seem to hear him. And he uh, is a bit too unnerved to do anything other than be frozen staring at her. Hello, uh, uh, you with the, the tears. <laughs> Bloody, bloody no. No reaction. I'm gonna go up and crouch in front of her. Careful. I might like spit out a face hugger or something. Okay, you said that you're you're gonna go stand in front of her? Crouch in front of her. Crouch in front of her, okay. Um She does not notice that you're there. Okay. She's just kind of tracing Felix's face on the picture. I came back at a good time. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. You did. yeah. Um. um uh, all right. So you you use wind to kind of knock it out of her hand. All right, um, so that is going to be a flight roll difficulty of uh, five with magic. Can I use your dice from now on? <laughs> yeah. That's two ones. Uh, plus one is three. I'm... Here, don't, don't use the pale blue ones. I'm so angry. They never roll well. I'm so angry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so you you try to make a gust of wind, but your fingertips just kind of get a little cold, and that's it. So.
So, uh... That's how safe to go? Like, snatch it out of her hands? Yeah. Um... So, this is... This is gonna be another flight roll. Um, it is, uh, with your plus four because it's Sable doing it. Um, but this is going to be, uh, difficulty of eight. And, uh, Felix, is there anything that, uh, you would like to do upon seeing your twin sister crying in an empty room holding a picture of your face. He He's just gonna go straight to her and like try and get her attention because that's his sister. Why is she crying? What's with the photo? He's just gonna start like building a little bit like what the hell is going on here? <laughs> Alright. Um, so she doesn't seem to notice anything that you do, but, uh, Sable does manage to, uh, take the, um, to take the, the picture from her and run back to Lonnie with it, and she is immediately hysterical trying to find the picture. And she's and she's muttering, "No, no, no! That's all I have left. I can't lose you again." Uh, I swear to God, if you make me cry in this first session, (laughs) (laughs) damn first session. Um, she, she's trying to catch it. Who's there? Who, what, what are you? I'm going to take the photo. I'm going to take the photo and move it out of Lonnie's reach to see if she's still following the photo. She is, and she's getting more hysterical. I'm going to put the photo back in her lap. Well, she's Uh, standing now. So are you going to just let her take the photo? Yes. Okay. So she takes it and she holds it to her chest, but she's still, like, looking around. She's scared now. Can I steal the photo back from her? Uh, yeah, give me a flight roll difficulty of eight. <laughs> okay, with that. Actually, no, she's, she's going to be holding on to it harder now. It's a flight roll difficulty of ten. Okay. Uh, stop torturing my sister. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's, it's for science. It's for science. It's for science. It's for science. Uh, do I roll anything with the die? Not that What was that? Do I ro- roll like mundane or magic with it, or just straight? Um. No, it's it's gonna be flight because this is mostly dexterity. Um. It would it would just be just straight, yeah. Ah, uh, I got an eight. Oh wait, nine. I got a nine. <laughs> a nine. Okay. Um. So you. You kind of, like, are tugging on it. You can't quite get it out of her reach. And, um... She, uh... She says, Stop it! Stop it! Who are you? What do you want? To write on, like, a chalkboard or a dry erase board or anything? Fill in parchment? Um... Not that you can see in the room. Alice is gonna ask for help and pull out a pen and say, We could write a message if we get the picture. Ella, no. So you're you're holding up the pen for her to see? No, no, I was holding up the pen for others to see. Oh, okay, for them to try and get the picture so that you can write on it. Yes. Okay. So, uh, 
So does anyone want to try? Does anyone else want to try their hand at taking it back? Yes. Okay. So go ahead and roll. It is a difficulty of ten. You can use magic. Eleven. Okay. So Lonnie does manage to get it. What are you going to write on the paper? Um, I'm going to ask Felix if there's anything we could write that would let her know that we're here to help her. Or anything um, that he wants to write at all. She is, but anyway, I'm going to have Felix write it in Felix's handwriting, so... Felix, here's my pen. <laughs> uh, thanks. Um, he's he's going to write. Calm down, darling girl. It's all right. I'm not far away, and that's all he's gonna put. Oh, okay. because. Darling girl is what one of their fathers calls her when she's upset. Okay. Um, yeah. So. And it just became a thing. Yeah. Okay. So she, uh, you, you hand the photo back to her, um, and as soon as the pen touched the paper, um, she could see it, and she takes it and sees what you've written and says, Fee? Fee, are you... You're okay? You're... I... Oh, God! And then she runs out of the room. She's no longer crying, but she's she's running through the halls. Looking for something. Well, I, I suppose we have to follow her. Yeah. All right. Come uh, on. Let's... <laughs> so you you follow her to uh, the bedroom of one of the dorm minders, um, and when she enters the room, she just kind of disappears. Oh. So I think she's That's in suspicious. Or Where'd she go? Or like, we're, like, next door to her dimension, or something. Something is off, you guys. Like, is your, is your sister at school with you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She, she is. Um. Can I put so just my arm into the room she disappeared in? Mm-hmm. All right, I'm gonna do that. Okay. Um, on the other side of the, uh of the room, you can't see it, but you feel a hand like, grip your forearm and gently start to pull. Does it feel rough or, like, like, a gentle pull? Uh, no, they're, they're gently pulling. Um, and they don't have a very firm grip. It feels like it could be another child's hand. I'm going to follow it. Okay. For adventure. <laughs> for adventure. For science. Yes. <laughs> Into the great unknown. Let's go. Yeah. All right. We're all just going to go. Okay. Walk right. after. Does everyone go through? Yes. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. So... On the other side, where it should be one of the dorm minder's rooms, you're now back in the maze, and you're at what appears to be either the entrance or the exit of the maze. There's hedge walls in front of you, hedge halls to either side of you, and behind you, you see the dorms again. But directly ahead, there's no more walls, just one last entryway, and you think you can see the stable. Or sorry, yeah, not I'm the stable, the forest. 
I, I'm, I'm out of here. Yeah. So you're going yeah. toward the forest? Yes. I will too. All right. All right. So you go through the forest, uh, or toward the forest, and as you exit the maze, um, just this warm light kind of tingles over all of you. Um, the bruise on the hand gets considerably lessened. Um, and off about five or six, uh, it just off a little ways, probably about two, three meters, um, you see Alexia having a great time with her friends. What the hell was that? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> that was something. <laughs> I'm blaming Felix for that one. Uh, <laughs> Felix is just going to cover his face for a few minutes and Bringing just us try and room. recover. <laughs> Family drama, man. <laughs> Screw you guys, okay? <laughs> uh, he is going to go over to check on his sister because that was terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, what, what does he say? He's, he's just gonna sort of catch her by the arm and be like, Are you okay? Like, are you actually okay? <laughs> uh, yeah, are you? Uh, I'm not quite sure, actually. Um, have you been here all day? Like, you've not I... gone anywhere or, you know, cried or... Yeah. Specific. Right? Have I cried? <laughs> no, <laughs> Fee, I'm fine. So it's just gonna kinda come up behind, put her put their hands on Felix's shoulders and go, We were just in the obstacle course, we're gonna go. And start kinda tugging Felix away. He's gonna resist at first and then be like, I'll I'll now. see you later. Okay? I... But, but, Let's okay. not freak your sister out. Let's not freak your sister out. Uh, right, right to Dad and Papa. Yeah, we'll do. <laughs> okay. See ya, bro. Bye. Ah, uh, uh, what was that, man? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't worry oh, about it. Didn't like you that. Say. <laughs> Ratty Coda is gonna climb up Felix and give him little rat kisses. Oh. Felix will cry. Like, happy tears, <laughs> but he'll cry. <laughs> Paul's just gonna kind of drag cast her over Felix's head and be like, there you go. Have the head. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> is there anything else that you guys would like to do? I'm gonna go feed just... Caster. Alright. Alright. And uh, Felix is going to write a letter to his dads. Yep. And Ellis? Ellis is going to just go to his dorm and make sure everything's real. <laughs> like, look through the windows and stuff. <laughs> And then he's going to sit down and write about his experience. Okay. Casual existential crisis of, is everything real? (laughs) Is everything real? (laughs) So, from what you can tell, everything is the way it should be. From what I can tell? (laughs) There are shadows where there should be shadows. All the doors have actual things beyond them. All of the windows actually show you what should be beyond them as well. Uh, there's, you know, laughing and giggling and running and stomping through the halls. There's scritches of quills on paper. And you can smell the dinner that is being prepared for about an hour from now. All seems well. Cool. So yeah, he just he just writes down what he experienced and hugs Raddy Coda extra tight. All right. 
Well then, with that, we will call an end for tonight.